Hello there, kitties. I'm Gary, the vacuum tube witch, and we haven't seen each other for a long time. There has been a lot of things uh, happening in the lab and in my life. I was away. <laughs> That's where I uh, did that MB260 video. Still got the control panel for that printer. Just in case I want to make a throwdown video of this thing. But, tell you what, something arrived from uh, America. <laughs> you may know what it is, but uh, it's, it's time to share that. But before that happens, let's take a look at my new and improved uh, workbench just to see what changed there and uh, what uh, new improvements uh, I did to it. So let's get over to the bench but get a different view. So I've got this uh, Razer Keo Pro that uh, I had a lot of problems with. <laughs> Finally uh, got it uh, pretty much operational. And let's take a look at uh, what's happening on the bench. So uh, of course we've got the test gear. <laughs> some project uh, that uh, I'll make a video about pretty soon and the uh, film extractor it got its improvement there's a uh, speed adjustment with with a uh, adjustable voltage regulator module So if I want to turn it on pretty slowly, I can do that, but I can also crank it up to go quite fast. That's, uh, that's one improvement. <coughs> the bench itself... Uh, I uh, I added uh, a uh, plastic trough for uh, the installation channel with uh, with sockets and um, custom modules. So uh, from uh, from left to right, we've got a bunch of uh, 230 volt sockets uh, hidden hidden behind the test gear. This is uh, a little speaker patch bay. It's not fully populated yet. I just uh, didn't uh, get the proper kind of uh, 6.3 or quarter inch jacks. And then we've got uh, a uh, RJ45 sockets for the local area network. A special red uh, socket for the device center test. General purpose sockets. Then I got the DC connections uh, for ground uh, 5 volts, uh, 12 volts and 24 volts. This is the my standard <laughs> NC type uh, two pin connector for twelve volts DC. What comes next? Uh, it's a uh, adjustable power supply, ground and positive, with a fuse be before the supply. This is the. Chinese made uh, module. Uh, I can turn on and off. Mm 
Uh, that's about it. Then I've got um, the main uh, control switches made by Apem. Very nice. Thing of beauty, J Forever. Compressor. Test gear. Turning on the test gear. It's coming up pretty nicely. The scope is on now. Generator coming to life. VTVM coming to life. Yeah. And then the light control. And uh, the side bench light. <coughs> Here I've got another equipment under test uh, socket. I'm planning on uh, adding a uh, Shuko type uh, socket uh, for uh, EU team because sometimes I work with uh, Western European, German, Dutch, uh, whatnot uh, equipment that uh, doesn't uh, have the plug that uh, would go into the CE 7 slash 5 uh, French type sockets that uh, are standard in Poland. So I'd like to have a uh, Shuko type socket uh, right next to the standard one. And I'd like to add uh, another RJ45 uh, LAN sockets just for convenience. What's uh, really interesting is the equipment power <laughs> equipment under test uh, power control. This is uh, the two-stage activation uh, of power. Right now uh, power to the EUT is off, but uh, if I want to power it up, I uh, press the momentary switch named uh, limit on. This turns off the equipment uh, under test uh, with a uh, dim bulb limiter. And the yellow uh, LED lights up. If I want to fully power the device, I uh, press the full on lever. The green uh, LED lights up. And uh, the dim bulb uh, tester is uh, bypassed. So the full power is going to the device under test. I can come back uh, down to limited power. I can uh, turn it off, of course, but I cannot turn on uh, the device without turning it uh, on uh, limited power first. Well, uh, unless I use a uh, combination of switches. Yeah, and another 12 volt DC NC type 2 pin socket. And uh, general purpose sockets. Right over there. I might modify this uh, in the future, but uh, that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, for for the bench uh, itself and now i've got something interesting uh, coming here from the usa so i uh, i recorded that part uh, separately and uh, we'll be doing the the scene switch in uh, in editing because uh, 
I lost uh, I lost the footage uh, from uh, from the desk. Uh, I lost the sound. So I have to do another take. <laughs> Shit happens. What's in this package? It's uh, it's labeled uh, that uh, it arrived uh, from abroad in a damaged uh, package, uh, unfit for purpose. And there is the customs declaration label from Custom Inc. <laughs> you probably know what it is, but those who don't know will soon learn about it. Looks pretty uneventful, right? A label from the manufacturer, yeah, not pretty generic, but <laughs> look at this. Custom Ink uh, Gildan. And uh, those who follow the Friend Lab channel uh, know this this design and one moment please so i'm back at the desk with my new lovely friend lab tea <laughs> by the way i haven't mentioned uh, one thing about the bench it's green now it's because I placed uh, the electrostatic uh, discharge uh, protection mat on it. That's, uh, that's generally good practice in uh, in an electronic uh, workshop. Uh, it also uh, helps um, with, uh, with soldering. It's uh, way uh, harder to lose those teeny tiny surface mount components. It's uh, it's pretty um, pretty much help. <laughs> so let's turn on the Commodore. Try to implement the code from uh, from the T-shirt. And uh, I'll be explaining what's happening in those lines uh, because uh, I uh, <coughs> I read uh, a lot of uh, comments uh, asking uh, what does this code do? <laughs> like uh, Fran said that uh, this is self-explanatory, but. <laughs> People who don't know uh, Commodore Basic, <laughs> including me, because I uh, only started learning it <laughs> recently with uh, with the Commodore in my lab. I uh, didn't start up the Commodore before I uh, completed uh, the power supply project. Yes, that's uh, that's the one with uh, my modifications that I made a video recently. So now uh, I consider it safe to turn on the Commodore with this power supply. <laughs> Let's change the view to the mobile camera. Let's uh, try uh, implementing the code from the t-shirt so the first line is uh, 5rm uh, t-shirt it's just a comment it's for the programmer not for the interpreter the second line is uh, P angle uh, 646 comma uh, 1. P angle is an uh, abbreviated uh, 
statement uh, of uh, the Commodore Basic. It uh, it means the same as poke, and poke is an instruction uh, used for manipulating the contents uh, of um, the memory. If you want to write a uh, value <coughs> to a uh, memory address, you can use poke for that. And uh, that's uh, pretty low level. <laughs> also a nice way to shoot yourself in the foot. And if you, if you want to enter this uh, abbreviated version, you have to type uh, P and then uh, Shift O. Pog 646. By the way, if you're a Half-Life fan, the original 1998 uh, Half-Life, the, the first game that started the series, and uh, if you are into the mods uh, for that game, you probably know a mod named uh, Pog 646, and uh, that's where the name comes from from uh, Commodore Basic. <laughs> so uh, what does this, um, what does uh, poking 646 uh, actually do? It changes the color of, uh, of the text to white. Because uh, I'm in the program mode, if you use the line numbers uh, at the beginning of uh, every line, they will be interpreted uh, when you run the program, rather than uh, this being done uh, right away uh, when you press return. But uh, there's uh, also the uh, execution mode uh, that uh, if you enter a statement and uh, confirm it with uh, return without a line number at the beginning, it will be executed uh, as soon as you press return. So, uh, line number 20. It's, uh, it's also a good practice uh, <coughs> to number the lines uh, not uh, one, two, three, four, five, but uh, but somewhat uh, sparser, like uh, ten, twenty, etc. Because if you want to add uh, another line or block of code afterwards, you can uh, do it in between without having to edit, uh, renumber all the lines in the program. Five three two L two eighty. It changes uh, the background color. If I remember correctly, the the frame color is uh, fifty three two eighty, and uh, the the proper background color is uh, fifty three two eighty one, and uh, changing this to zero means that you change it to black. Of course, I made a little bug here. Forgot the line number. And if I uh, pressed uh, return on this line, it would do it uh, immediately. If I'm wrong, I can use the delete uh, key and that's pretty much uh, a counterpart of backspace on modern computers so we've got uh, the program from the 
tem chart. And art on the Commodore. So, what happens if I press return? Nothing happens? Maybe I should do something else to get it to run? Get it to run? See? <laughs> it changed um, the three colors. Now, I can uh, I can clear um, the contents of the screen. And there's this uh, clear and home uh, key, and I have to press Shift and uh, clear home to um, to clear the screen. And I've got only the cursor. If I want to. If I forgot what the program was about and want to remind myself, I can uh, just list it. And there, we've got it. So that would be it for this little Commodore. There will be more videos about it. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure of that, but <laughs> my new t-shirt Commodore up and running, carry deck up and running again, new projects, just give me the energy to make new videos. <laughs> so, stay determined and carry on. <laughs>